In July of 2001, Buff Bagwell's mother, Judy, called the WBF's office to request that her son get time off to heal from an injury. She also complained about his travel arrangements. What are your thoughts? Well, if that is indeed true, and I've heard both sides that uh, she did call and I heard that she didn't, you know, so, I mean, whatever side you believe, uh, I think that if, if you have an injury, you should be the one calling, not your mom. And uh, and also, if you have something to say about your travel arrangements, you should be be taking care of that, too. So my thoughts are Buff should uh, should do it by himself and not, not with his mom calling. I had once asked Buff about it. He was saying that, oh, Jim Ross is full of shit. And right. the next day we ran into Jim Ross. So I said, oh, Buff, here, here we go. Perfect opportunity. You were literally just telling me yesterday that Jim Ross is full of shit. He goes up to Jerry. Goes, How you doing, JR? How's, how's it going? Doesn't say a word about right. it. <laughs> yeah. Sounds about right. So was Buff making it up? And his mom really did do that. I can't see Jim uh, Ross making that up. I can't see JR making that up either, but, uh, you know, I've heard both sides. So, uh, yeah, if, if, if that's the case, I, th I, I think that, uh, you shouldn't have your mother call, especially your own your company like WWF, WWE at that time. Speaking of mama's boy, he was a big mama's boy, uh, for Judy Bagwell. Sure. Judy Bagwell on a pole. Yes. Great, great yeah. match. It's actually Judy Bagwell on a forklift match. On a remember? forklift. Yeah, okay, that, she wasn't on a pole. Yeah. That'd be a different uh, occupation, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah. Judy Bagwell on the pole. Canyon. And then on the main stage, Judy Bagwell. Yep. Yes. Canyon had to put her on there. Yeah. Remember he had the, the painted shirt of Judy Bagwell, too? I'm trying to forget stuff like that. Crazy. Yeah. Craig said Buff would have his mother call Bad News Allen would not. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. Bad News Allen wouldn't have his mom do anything for him. <laughs> I, I, I highly doubt it. Yeah. Dr. Tom, I believe Shane Helms's version of the story on the Buff Bagwell fight. I think Bagwell initiated it or Buff initiated it and instigated it. Um, and he got what he deserved. Do you agree with this, do you think the buff version is not the actual version of the story? I would, I would be more inclined to believe Shane than I would Buff, and and I like Buff. I mean, uh, he's always been cool to me. I've never had any problem with him. But at the same time, I know, <laughs> I know people like Buff, and I've been around people like Buff before. So I know how the story can kind of change and and uh, be. Um, I don't want to say fabricated, but. Uh, uh, embellished a little bit with his own colors and, and put his crayons on to, to the story. On the Dark Side of the Ring episode, I'm like listening to the story because I've heard it from a few wrestlers and I'm just listening to it and Buff says his version of it. I was like, wait, what the hell is he talking about? That's not what I've heard like through through the years. So it was weird to hear that version. You didn't really get the, the Shane Helms version. What, but what, was, what was Buff's version? So basically, um, when he, he said that Shane was busting his balls about getting too much ring time, and when he turned his back, Shane put a like a frozen water bottle to the back of his head. Now, I had, I had never heard that one before, so I was just like, wow, that, that was weird. Where did, that, where did that come from? And Shane, of course, on Twitter the next day was saying, not true. That's bullshit. X, all the wrestlers, like, this is completely made up. So I was just surprised that that was the story that uh, Buff had come up with. Yeah, well, some people have foggy memories, you know, and uh, that happens. Well, the story that I heard from a couple of wrestlers was that Buff kind of initiated it or really instigated it a, a little bit and kind of teasing him, and they got into a scuffle, and, and Shane more or less won, but Buff was saying he got cheap-shotted. So I think that maybe that was his kind of way out of why he lost, maybe. Yeah, it could be. And, uh, you know, I haven't seen the Bagwell episode, but uh... – you know, I've, I've heard it's an interesting episode. I might have to check that out. Very interesting. He, I mean, I love Buff. He's great, but he, he's a storyteller in a good way and, and sometimes in a bad way. I think we all are. Yes. Oh, yes. In hindsight, it was wrong for WB to release Buff over one bad match that had to be political. He was being hazed backstage as well. 
I don't know if that's the case. I think uh, – I don't know if it was just because of one bad match, but, you know, just like the question earlier about his mom calling the office and little things like that. You know, it's – it's um, life is political. And in any company you, you go to, there's going to be politics. So um, whether it was or wasn't, I think it was a matter of – the other outside forces that were entering in to Buff's career in WWE from his mom calling the office, talking to JR and, and wanting special privileges and things like that. Um, I think there were a lot of other elements at, at play there. When you think about it too, he's gone after that, the, the Judy Bagwell calling and, and yeah. to, to, with JR, then Vince gets pissed you know, about all that, the rumor is he told JBL when they all beat up the WCW guys and they beat up Buff. And remember, they threw him out of the ring and they threw him out of the building, all that other stuff. There is a vicious clothesline by JBL, and they're saying, oh, Vince ordered JBL to do that. I, I don't know if necessarily that's true, but it seems like JBL was just stiff with everybody. I mean, nothing yeah. like, nothing for Buff, but people claim that that big clothesline was, was extra stiff. Well, you can read anything you want when you have a conspiracy theory, you know, and, and yeah, JBL was, was just solid with everybody. So yeah, he didn't, he didn't pull any punches. Do you think Vince would tell somebody, Hey, go hurt this guy or no? Well, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities. Was the office during the attitude era ever high on buff Bagwell? Like did you, did the office and the behind the scenes like buff? I don't think so. I mean, I just think, again, Buff had a high opinion of himself, much higher than a lot of other people did. And uh, I, I don't think the office saw it that way. That's just, uh, I don't know for sure because no one ever came over to me and said that, but that's just my opinion. I could see JR saying, oh, this guy's got charisma. We could do something with him. But then when, you know, when he, he sees maybe a bad attitude, then maybe that, that kind of changes. Like, all right, maybe we can't do something with him. Yeah, you got to, I mean, attitude is everything. You, it's like, uh, you're not going to go anywhere. You, you, the, the difference between a flat tire and a bad attitude is you're not going to go anywhere until you change them. So. Good point, yeah. yeah. And it did, did feel like Buff after that neck injury in, in 98, did feel like a little bit of a different Buff than we got before because he was super athletic before that. Not that he wasn't after, but he was even more athletic in, in like the early 90s. Right. Yeah, well, I could that could spook you a little bit. I, mean, I can great, understand that. Yeah. Great question here. ATF Media. Is it possible that Bagwell got punched by Hands of Stone, Ronnie Garvin, and got his neck broke for the match, but tried to make it look like it happened in the ring for workman's compensation? That actually did happen. I was there and I saw it. I saw the Hands of Stone, Ronnie Garvin punch uh, Bagwell 